Hi, I'm Chris Moorcroft, uh, President of the Association of Ecologists for this year, um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how I feel about the conference and how it's gone uh, for 2010. Um, I'm going to start off with EMA, if I may, um, and uh, uh, it's been a great topic of debate, and in fact I've just come out of the conference hall where Kirsty Walk and Anastasia uh, and uh, a couple of other people and, and a principal are talking about educational maintenance allowances and the future and uh, the future white paper. Um, the educational maintenance allowance discussion has been very interesting at this conference in that um, we uh, clearly uh, are seeing that as a, a, a great problem for the sector um, because essentially I think the, the cutting off of educational maintenance next March uh, in 2011 uh, is going to be a, a bit of a shock to the system and um, certainly since the uh, presentation by John Hayes uh, yesterday and uh, uh, the day before um, where he announced that you know when we had a, he, he, he's aware of some of the issues that are happening with EMAs uh, it's quite clear that he's still listening and we've had discussions with him already since his presentation yesterday and he has agreed to take back and see what can be done over a number of factors and really there's two major issues that have concerned members at this conference. One is the, um, if you like, the contractual relationship that colleges have had with students coming onto two-year programmes. Students that started in September 2010 and won't be finishing until September 2012 did so on the basis that they thought they were going to get um, perhaps a £30 a week education maintenance allowance because of the family income coming in and that was the sort of the, the, the basis by which they signed up to coming to college. In reality, um, next September, there is no educational maintenance allowance for them. So, that, so the question is, is that fair? Is that right? Um, how would you feel if you're a consumer? And you'd, um, I mean, actually, I remember um, renting a, uh, um, a one of those... Um, what was it called, ITV digital boxes, um, only to be told that I had a 12-month rental and then somebody told me that, um, oh, by the way, we've gone bankrupt. Can we have the, Can we have your digital box back? And now you, you, you've got nine months' rent left on that box, uh, but you're not going to get back in. I wasn't terribly pleased about that at the time. Um, and in fact, I never gave them the digital box back and they never came for it because they knew, and then I got a letter later on saying, yes, that was a contractual arrangement and uh, you can keep the digital box. So it's a bit like that, really. I mean, uh, uh, students are going to feel pretty aggrieved next September that signed up on the basis they thought they were going to get an education maintenance. So we're hoping John Hayes will take that back and think about the interim arrangements for some of those students. And then the other thing, taking educational maintenance allowances down from uh, uh, 300, sorry, 550 million a year down to around about 75 million a year. I think those are the figures broadly. Might not be absolutely accurate. Uh, that's a huge uh, downgrading. Um, and essentially, there is insufficient to cover the real basic needs. I mean, educational maintenance allowance, you could argue, were the basic needs, but we're now talking we can't even afford the bus fares uh, for a lot of students distributing that amount of money will not cover the transport issues that are going to occur in the FE sector. And, you know, some people could argue that the EMAs were, were not being used by some students appropriately. They, they might buy iPods instead of buying books or whatever. Um, but when you're getting down to 74, 75 million pounds a year's worth of allocation of learner support funds um, to the, the, the volume of, uh, I think it's uh, 3 million young people or whatever it is within the FE sector, it's just not going to go far enough and it's not going to provide uh, uh, access for students to come to college, let alone buying books and papers and pens and textbooks and those sorts of things. We're just not going to have sufficient resources um, for the really disadvantaged that, uh, uh, you know, I, I accept that some parents may be able to scrimp and save and get get those students to college and the EMA is not an issue but you know so there's that so EMAs are clearly an issue it's something that the AOC will continue to press with ministers um, uh, and ministers know uh, how we feel about it because I've put it in my speech and I think there are more questions on the floor about EMA than almost anything else um, and then uh, the other uh, issue about that is if, if EMA if, if the worst possible scenario and I think I think what politicians are saying well if the compulsory uh, um, um, participation age of education and training is going to go to 18 we wouldn't pay for students to go to school so why would we pay for students to go to to college you know for a 14 or a 15 year old we don't give an EMA for them so 
that's another reason why they feel that EMA is now no longer appropriate because of the raising the, of the training and education participation age. However, they've also said they're not going to bring in any legal sanctions against 16-year-olds who don't turn up to college or don't go into training. So we do know there will be a, an opportunity for, for young people to say, well, don't want to go, can't afford it, not going to do it.